Hey everybody, this past month or two months or however long it's been, I don't know, I've been focusing on some personal and business related stuff and also trying to stick to all the goals I outlined in the last devlog. It took a little longer than it should have, but I think I got most everything done. Uh, LATC is fully blocked out now, I tested replication a little bit more, although there's no multiplayer build yet, and I got my business set up and my Steam page launched. You can go wishlist the game now on Steam, I'll put the link in the description. In this devlog, I'll talk a little bit more about the struggles carving out the final sections of the first map LETC, the upcoming rework and the plans for multiplayer, some vehicle changes, and a little bit more. Level design can be tough for me from both a technical standpoint and a creative standpoint. Besides making the level work in terms of gameplay flow and overall cohesiveness, it's sometimes really difficult for me to fill in some areas or gaps of detail that I hadn't considered. There are detailed sections of LATC that I have in my head and I've had since the beginning and have kind of mapped out early on. A lot of the surrounding details have been relatively easy to fill in since I had an idea of where I wanted to take the map as a whole, but I was having some troubles filling in areas that I glossed over during the initial design phase. I think one problem that I never considered how big I really wanted the maps to be in the game. Initially I had the idea that the maps would be small to medium size, whatever that means, and I'd have a handful of them to play through. Then LATC turned out to be much larger than I initially expected, partly due to me trying to mimic the real life size instead of just designing for the game world, but also because I just kept adding and building on without considering how much I was tasking myself with. Since I had a base design in mind from the beginning, it was easy to riff off of and fill off the little pockets of space with detail. As the map grew, some of the outlying areas that I had created road systems around felt like they had zero detail or really reason to exist at all. As I added buildings and continued to playtest the map, it became very clear that my initial expectations of having a handful of varied maps at this size was unrealistic, especially as a solo developer. I started cutting out some of the unnecessary sections of LATC, especially on the highway side. The overpass acts as a cutoff point, and so I extended the spline to cut sort of diagonally through the map, cutting off a reasonable chunk of unused map space. I started lining the outskirts with buildings and the edges of the map with trees, which I hope are enough of a barrier for the player. I do hate invisible walls, but eventually we'll have to teleport them back or block them off arbitrarily. The map as a result has shrunk a little bit, but is also more visually interesting with a towering overpass cutting through and scattered trees everywhere. There's still no detail in a lot of areas, but there's enough of a base to make the map come together. One thing I've realized is I really need to start making or finding, buying, contracting out little tools for myself to aid in my level design process. I found a few useful tools like Level Design Assistant, Blockout Tools Plugin, Builder Toolkit, and things like that for UE4, but there are a lot of areas where I find myself doing things that I probably should be doing. For example, all the grind splines are currently hand placed, even on the road side guards, which is the hardest ones, and all the terrain is manually sculpted, the road blueprint splines don't currently allow for raising and lowering the terrain, traffic paths had to be manually drawn, and all that kind of stuff. There's just so many little inefficiencies that I could probably correct with a few days or a few hundred dollars, so I really need to work those out before moving on to the next steps of the design process. Up until now, the vehicle's weight was set at 100 kilograms. It's the default setting for an object in UE4 when you enable physics, and I just never changed it, which wasn't a problem until I started introducing physics interactions into the environment. To compensate for the vehicle's weight, I had to scale everything else down, which led to some odd behavior when colliding with objects. Since changing the vehicle's weight is a big deal, can greatly affect handling, I kept putting it off until now. I shouldn't have been that worried though. I just set the vehicle's weight to 1000 kilograms and updated all the force values with an extra zero and voila! Now parked vehicles don't have to weigh 50 kilograms to get knocked around. That being said, UE4's default gravity is very floaty and to compensate, I apply a downforce on the vehicle every frame. The physics objects still feel very floaty, and after testing it briefly, my next step will be to rework the engine's gravity setting to make everything feel more weighted overall. I also changed up the vehicle's suspension forces a little bit, mainly focusing on stability. Instead of hard resetting, the vehicle now rolls back on its wheels after wiping out. Jumping is much more stable now that I'm applying a force while ignoring mass, and landing is generally more stable due to added downforce when all the wheels aren't grounded. As always, I still think this needs more tweaking, but it does feel slightly better. Jumping's been updated to use a charge mechanic, which allows the player to tap jump for something like hopping a curb, and allows them to hold for a larger time jump. I'm not 100% sold on the charge mechanic yet. I do like the ability to hold it for timing jumps, but it feels like it adds just that much more complexity onto the controls, which isn't necessarily a good thing. Possible that I'm just not personally used to the change yet, though. 
There's been a few additional changes like swapping to new vehicle sounds from the marketplace, some gameplay changes like boost no longer extends combos, and some slight improvements to grinding. A full list of the changes will be in the next set of patch notes with the new build that is released right now on itch.io. I'll link those below in the description. Oh, and check out the new boost flame particles too. I finally figured out how to make the particles stay in one place while the vehicle's moving, and I'll make sure to add tire smoke back in soon. Well, I tested multiplayer again, this time with the SmoothSync plugin from the UE4 Marketplace. It's basically a plug and play component for syncing transforms across the network so you don't have to do anything extra in theory. It worked. I was able to have two players driving around and they could see each other driving around, but that was about it. The trick system registered incorrectly and the HUD was broken, and the vehicle didn't seem to animate correctly at all. No tricks were replicated and all that kind of stuff. While this is a step forward, it really didn't give me anything new and is still going to have to do some heavy code rework, which is fine and I'm looking forward to it anyways. On the back end of things, I did decide that I'll be going with Epic Online Services. The sheer amount of features and plugins and options available to integrate are, are crazy, and it's free, it's cross-platform, it seems like a no-brainer, especially now that they just announced Andy Cheat and Voice Services to complement everything else that they already offer. I purchased the EOS Library Blueprint Integration Packs on the Marketplace, and I'm looking forward to trying out the test projects and then integrating them into the game itself. With any luck, I'll have the ability for anybody to host a free roam session to drive and trick around with others by the time the next devlog rolls around. So let's update the roadmap for TCPD, which I introduced in a previous devlog. As I mentioned before, I want to have multiplayer really working by the next devlog. This means having the ability to launch a game from the menu or the ability to join a session from a server browser or matchmaking system. The vehicle needs to be replicated along with all the animation, character tricks, and particles and all that stuff. The UI tricks and combos need to be player independent. All I'm looking for initially is just a free roam mode where players can drive around and explore, so I won't be focusing on any game modes or shared scoreboards or anything like that for just this first pass. Thanks for watching and following along with the development of Tristan Cole's Pro Driver. Let me know what you think. What do you think about the LATC? Are you excited to try the multiplayer? Is there any kind of tricks and stuff like that you want to see? I'm always looking for different feedback and stuff like that. There's a new build on HIO, the link's in the description. The game is on Steam, please go wishlist it now. Again, that link will be in the description below. Appreciate you watching, like, subscribe, and all that stuff, and see you next time. Later.